You're listening to the Platform Launchers podcast. I'm John Stonge, and it's great to have you with us this week, as always, because we're about to talk about building and growing and monetizing your online platform. We're going to talk about taking your passion, turning it into a platform, so you can earn a paycheck from that, and we get excited about this each week as we record these podcasts and release these videos on YouTube. And in fact, that's our big theme this week because... Well, not that long ago, I promised you a specific update, and this is the perfect week for me to deliver on that promise. It's an update on one of my best-performing online videos. And in fact, just a, a few days ago, the video that I promised you an update about, it actually crossed over the mark of hitting 1 million views on YouTube, and I'd like to share some insights that I've gained in the process of recording this content and releasing it and ju then just watching what people responded to. And by the way, I tried the same approach that I'm about to outline for you because I'm going to give you some pointers here. I'm going to give you some bullet points, some things that you could actually do if this is something that you'd like to pursue as well. Uh, but I, the approach that I used for the video that has now hit 1 million views I tried that approach on another video as well, and the other video that I tried it on has over 100,000 downloads, and it's growing. So this isn't just one thing that worked one time. Uh, there's a pattern with it, and I've used it for a few other things as well, but I have a few that it's really worked well. But those of you that are, I mean, a lot of you that uh, access this content. You you don't just hear it on the podcast. You also watch it on YouTube. And I think you'll agree with this statement. YouTube and online video is uh, just in general, it's a form of, of content creation that is worth getting excited about. I get excited about it. It's a growing medium. And for many people, it's the primary way right now that a lot of people are consuming online content. This has become the main thing for many people. When I interact with young people, whether they're my my students or my children or the friends of my children, many of them primarily are accessing online video when they go to the internet for content. And I see this increasingly with uh, adults, even older adults as well. They're consuming online content in video form. Now, there's a little bit, I'm about to give you some pointers here, but I, I want to make note of one quick thing before I give you these pointers here that led to the million downloads for me. There's actually a debate raging right now as to whether short form or long form video content produces better results. So I don't know if you have an opinion on that. I definitely have an opinion on it, but people debate this right now, whether it's short form or long form video that's getting the better results. Now, generally speaking, short form videos. So when we're talking videos we're talking videos that are basically 60 seconds or less. So we'll just say that's the general rule. 60 seconds or less, so a minute or less, short-form videos. Typically, they tend to get more views, but long-form videos tend to produce better results. So it's a little bit of a trade-off. Those short-form videos do tend to get more views as a whole, but the long-form videos tend to produce some better results. Here's what's happening. This is what's happening with these trends. Short-form videos, they're typically, not always, but they're typically consumed for entertainment. So people, they'll just kind of scroll through videos. They're not even looking for anything specific. They just wait to see what's funny or what's entertaining in short-form videos just continue to populate their screen, and they're typically consumed for the purpose of entertainment. Long-form videos are typically consumed for advice and instruction. And typically, if you go to a long-form video, it's not because you were just scrolling and something randomly appeared. You went to that video because you were looking for something specific. So that's a very different way to utilize video. And long-form videos, again, are typically consumed for advice an instruction. The video that I shared that just crossed the 1 million mark is long form video. It's not long, but it would be considered long form video because it's roughly six minutes long. It's brief, but it's long enough that you'd only really be watching it if you were looking for help solving a specific problem. So with that said, all that intro out of the way and some of that those uh, metrics that I just wanted to highlight really quickly. With that said, 
I just want to walk you through five simple steps. These aren't very complicated, but five simple steps that can help you gain traction on YouTube if that's something you're interested in doing. Th these are steps that I follow when my goal is to create something helpful that has the chance to go, to go viral. These are also steps that I think are useful if you would like YouTube to start to become a source of leads for your online platform. If you would like to start connecting with more people, if you would like to do some things that have the capacity to lead to audience growth, but we would say it's more targeted audience growth, this is something that I think you'll find helpful. I have absolutely found it helpful, and I think you'll find it helpful as well. So here are my five things. All right, so if you're creating video content, you want something to go uh, viral on YouTube, or you want something to at least get you know a decent amount of downloads, this is where it begins. Number one on my list is this. Pick a common problem that you know how to solve. Pick a common problem that you already know how to solve. That's principle number one. So my best performing video, the one that I've been talking about uh, throughout the course of our time here together, is a, a video about lawn care. You may have heard me reference it more than once. I even reference it in uh, in my book, Build, Grow, and Monetize Your Online Platform. I reference it there as well. But it, it's basically a video that demonstrates how to kill the typical lawn weeds that most homeowners deal with during the warm months. So what I did and what is helping that video to continue to grow, now that it's hit one million, it won't surprise me if it starts to hit you know multiple millions over the course of time, but what you want to do, you, you, number one on the list is just pick a common problem that you know how to solve. Just as you're trying to brainstorm, what can I create? What kind of video should I create? Pick a common problem you know how to solve. You should create a video about that. So start there. So that's number one on the list. All right, number two on the list is this. Use your phone to record a video that demonstrates how to solve the problem, but make sure that the video is less than 10 minutes. Now, you could go a little bit over than that. It's not it's not going to be a crime if you do, but in general, if, if you make it less than 10 minutes, I think you're probably going to experience a little bit more success because I think sometimes when people look at longer videos, they think, I don't really have time to watch that right now. I just want the, the quick version of whatever the solution is. So use your phone. You don't have to go out and buy any special equipment. You don't have to go out and buy a GoPro. You don't have to go out and buy expensive microphones. You're certainly welcome to do that. And there are some people that do that and it works great for them. But I, I would say most of us can get really good video just by using our phone and then record with that phone, record a video that demonstrates how to solve whatever that common problem you figured out in step number one. Just make sure the video is less than 10 minutes. And here's the other thing. Uh, some people are camera shy. Maybe if you're listening to me right now, maybe if you're watching this video right now, you're kind of camera shy. I totally understand that. At one point, I would say maybe I was a little bit camera shy. I've gotten a bit used to it over time. But here's the thing. You don't have to appear in your video. In fact, the video that just went over a million for me, I'm not in the video. My voice is in the video, but my face is not in the video. So the video that you cr you create, it could actually just be a video of you solving the problem with your voice narrating in the background. So it doesn't even have to be you on on video, right? It could just be you solving the problem and those that are watching the video just listen to your voice. Again, my video that that just crossed over that 1 million view mark, uh, it features me pointing out the weeds I'm about to kill. So this is the progression of the video. I identify the problem. So I'm pointing out the weeds that I'm about to kill. And then I show quick video of me mixing the weed killer into a tank sprayer. I know this sounds riveting. Um, <laughs> but I, I mix the, the weed killer into the tank sprayer. And then I add an ounce of dish soap to make it work better. That's like the secret ingredient. And uh, then I spray the weeds, and then I track the process of the weeds withering. So it's a video. It's six minutes long, but I recorded it in parts over the course of several days as I, you know, identified the weeds, made up the weed killer mix, sprayed them, and then watched the stuff wilt. And basically, it just shows the viewer exactly what to do, and it doesn't take a long time to get to the point. It's just, it's just very simple. And people spend less than six minutes of their time, and they know exactly what to buy and exactly what to do. 
and it's done really, really well. Alternatively, I have another alternate suggestion for you that you could do. You don't even have to use your phone to do this one. You can also just go to something like canva.com. I use Canva quite regularly to create content, but you could go to canva.com and just create a slideshow like you were creating some sort of presentation. And then uh, Canva allows you to make a recording of that presentation with uh, their built-in recording studio, and you could just record using your voice and just show a slideshow of images on Canva. And you can accomplish the same exact thing, whether or not you record something on your phone or not. You could just do it via Canva and use their built-in recording studio right there at canva.com. And they have a free version of that. They also have a premium version of that. Uh, but the free version is plenty robust to get started with that. All right, so that was number two. Number three is this. This is this is step three in my bullet points here. Give the video a title that mirrors what someone will actually type in the search bar. So think about what somebody's actually going to be searching for and then title your video that because that will make it rank most likely higher in the search results the closer you are to what someone would actually be searching for in what you choose to title your video, the more likely I think they are going to be to actually find your video and be able to watch it. I know someone who may be looking for a video like mine. What they're going to be typing in is something like how to kill weeds in your lawn. So that would be a good title for my, my uh, video, how to kill weeds in your lawn. Or if they're being more specific, they might type, how to kill crabgrass without killing your good grass, something like that, right? I'm trying to mirror what somebody would actually be typing in the search bar. And so that's basically the kind of title I gave my video. It's just basically how to kill crabgrass without damaging your lawn. And uh, it's worked out really well. I called it exactly what I thought someone might type if they were looking for a video like what I had created. So again, point three, you give the video a title that mirrors what someone will actually type in the search bar. If you do that, they're more likely to find it. All right, here's number four. Point number four, don't add filler content, just get to the point. Don't add a whole bunch of filler, just get to the point. I have to tell you, one of the most annoying things that I run into when I look for the answer to a problem on YouTube are people who take forever to get to the point. They give you their life story first. I, I saw one video where after they were talking all about their day, they then followed that with a couple minutes of, of making coffee. And I, I thought, okay, lovely. As much as I, I love coffee, I, I really just am looking to solve a problem here. I don't need to observe you making coffee and telling me about your day. It's just get to the point. Honestly, when people do that sort of stuff, it drives me crazy. Uh, earlier today, I was trying to watch a power washing video, just somebody that was pressure washing um, brick. I wanted to see exactly how they did it. And I ended up turning the video off because I lost patience with the video because the person just never seemed to get around to actually pressure washing the brick. They were just talking about everything else under the sun. So it, it was driving me nuts. They weren't getting to the point. They had too much filler content I, and they lost me. Now, here's the thing. When you're creating your video, you don't need to pepper your video with movie clips, with long intros, with animation, with other kinds of filler. You don't have to do any of that. Just get right to the point and your audience will reward you. They will like your video. They will share your video. They will comment on your video. And when they do stuff like that, that in turn will boost your engagement rankings in YouTube's algorithm. And what YouTube does at that point is they see engagement on your video growing. They are more likely to recommend your video to others. And that's exactly what they did for me. That gave my content a huge boost uh, for a while. Every time somebody would comment on the video, I would reply. At this point now, there's too many comments on it, and uh, it's been too repetitive, so I haven't been replying to those things. But the algorithm the algorithm has already been triggered, so I don't necessarily feel like I need to reply to every single comment on that video at this point. But newer videos, when I'm trying to get them out there, I'm trying to engage with people on those videos. It certainly helps. But again, you just get to the point, keep it simple, and that encourages people to watch and engage. And likewise, I'll, I'll say this too, because a lot of people get overwhelmed with the thoughts of creating video because they think, oh, I'm not a videographer. I don't know how to make all these slick edits and, and things like that. Don't worry about making a bunch of edits. Don't worry about that. 
just keep the video simple. Take a clear video. Make sure you're speaking nice and clear so that people can hear your voice and understand what you're saying. And that's it. It doesn't have to be clever. It doesn't have to be slick. No filler. Just get to the point. But now here's number five. And some of you are really going to like this. And then I'm going to tell you a few trends to keep your eyes out for. Uh, don't be afraid to monetize your video. That's point number five on my list here. Don't be afraid to monetize your video. Now, when you combine the ad revenue that YouTube pays, and they will pay that once you re reach a thousand subscribers and a certain amount of watch hours, they will start paying you ad revenue. They will make you eligible for that. And it's, uh, you know, they can be pretty generous with that ad revenue sometimes. Uh, but when you combine the ad revenue that they pay, and when you add to that commissions that you can earn from Amazon Associates, Amazon Associates will pay you commissions if you include an affiliate link in the description of your video for whatever product you may have used there. You can earn good money doing something like this. So don't be afraid to monetize your video. That's something that can be highly, highly beneficial. During the summer months, that crabgrass video, uh, that earns me typically, no joke, between $1,000 and $1,200 per month during the summer months when people typically are accessing Lawn care videos. And again, it's just a simple six-minute video, but it solves a problem and it's turned into something that at the end of the year ends up being, you know, a nice bonus amount of income that I earned from something that I recorded, you know, a little while ago, and it doesn't require any additional work on my part. Now, before we wrap up, before we finish up, give me a few more moments here because I want to point out a few trends that I'm noticing. There's actually several trends in online video right now that I think are helpful to observe and several trends that are helpful not to observe or not to incorporate. And the trends that I see working involve two different kind of approaches. They're similar. Uh, it, it's the idea of problem-solving content which I just described, you know, how to create problem-solving videos. But I've also noticed another form of content gaining some traction on YouTube lately, and that would be commentary videos. And I'm calling them commentary videos. I don't know if others have different names. Some people just refer to this as vlogging. But I'm saying it's about commentary because they typically follow a theme. So commentary on a theme. Let me explain a little bit more what I mean. So my best video shows you how to fix your lawn. So that would be a problem-solving video. But I'm about to begin offering some commentary videos related to personal finance and a few other subjects that I care about. In fact, just earlier today, as an experiment, I posted one of those personal finance videos. Um, if, you, if you feel like it, you, you're welcome to search for it. But it's basically a video that outlines the steps that I took to pay off my mortgage 17 years early. So that video is now live on YouTube. I posted it just a, a few hours ago, and I was checking to see if people started watching it, and thankfully they have. It's off to a nice start. But that's like a commentary type video where I'm talking about personal finance and giving some opinions about things that worked well for me and worked well for our family. And uh, and I, I see that trend increasing. That's a trend right now. And uh, I see more and more people offering videos like that. And the way it often looks is I often see people sitting at a desk or sitting in their car or taking a walk through their neighborhood as they record and they give commentary on a particular subject that they feel like talking about. These videos aren't overly produced. It usually doesn't matter if you watch these videos closely because the primary content in them is actually the audio commentary, not the visuals. So you can, you can look away from your computer and just let the commentary run. It's not about the video as much as it is about the commentary, the words that are being spoken. Some content creators that are operating in this commentary genre, they release videos like this daily. Or, or just about every day. I've noticed some people are doing this daily, and I've watched some channels in recent days explode with subscribers. I've seen some financial channels that I follow exploding. I've seen some channels that offer kind of like social commentary or things related to politics and government and things like that. That right now is a popular topic because of uh, the time of year that it happens to be and the season that we're in right now. But one mistake that I often see a lot of people making, and this would be a, a, a mistake trend or a trending mistake, uh, but I see a lot of people making this mistake, and it basically involves filming very short videos 
that are very highly produced but don't meet much of a need or don't serve much of a specific audience. They just think that if they create a short, highly produced video that somehow that's going to go viral and people are going to love it and it's going to become a big deal and they spend all sorts of time creating that content and it doesn't lead to their channel growing and it doesn't lead to sales of their products or services. And I look at that sort of thing and I think you're wasting your time. That is a waste of time. This, these real quick 60-second videos that, that don't really produce anything, that's not a strategy for YouTube. Some people might argue that's a strategy for TikTok, and it might be, but I'm not really talking about TikTok as I talk about this. I'm talking about a strategy specifically for YouTube. And what I have found with YouTube when it comes to brand awareness and marketing and connecting with people and even doing some things like I talk about here that solve problems that result in you earning an income, YouTube is a good approach for doing this. But anyway, these are a few trends to keep in mind if you're serious about attempting a YouTube strategy as part of your online platform. I'll say this as we wrap up. If I was starting a channel from scratch, I was doing that right now. If I was just starting from scratch, I would either offer commentary or solve a problem, like I described in, in our, our conversation this week. I'd either offer commentary or I would solve a problem. If I was starting from scratch, that would be the focus I took. And I would attempt to post a new video every day that was less than 10 minutes in length, and I would title the videos based on what I think people are actually searching for. Now, again, do the videos have to be exactly 10 minutes in length or less than that? No, not exactly. The video I posted earlier today, I tried to keep it short, but it ended up being 14 minutes. So we'll see if that if that hurts me in any way. It's a little bit of an experiment, but point being, again, my best performing video, six minutes long, solves a problem, easy to watch. It gets to the point, no filler. It's not elaborately edited, anything like that. And uh, I'm not even on camera. You just you just hear me talking as I demonstrate how to do what I'm trying to teach those that are watching the video to do. I'm trying to solve a problem quickly and efficiently. And I imagine you could do the same exact thing with something you know. You could record it with your phone. You could record it with Canva. Piece of cake, right? I hope this helps. I hope someone who's either watching us right now or listening gives this a shot. And I hope that if you give this a try that you'll actually send me an email and let me know how it goes. You can email me, john at platformlaunchers.com. That's john at platformlaunchers.com. I'd love to hear how it goes. Love to see some of the things that you're creating and some of the problems you're solving or even some of the commentary that you may be offering on a particular subject. That would interest me greatly. Again, send me an email if you do something like that that follows this strategy. I'd love to be able to follow it john at platformlaunchers.com. And if you've never stopped by our website, you can visit platformlaunchers.com, take a, a test drive of our membership community where we build, grow, and monetize platforms together. You could look at some of our courses, some of our articles. We've got a lot of resources available at platformlaunchers.com. We hope you'll check it out. But in the meantime, we hope you have an awesome week. Thanks so much for tuning in. We look forward to the next time we're able to get together. But in the meantime, we hope you have a, a, a great remainder to your day. And next time, we'll be here before you know it. But in the meantime, take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye now.